What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homeboy, Gossip Girl. And today we're going to talk about a New York City hospital, 24 hours of hell, okay? Now let's go ahead and get into it because there's a lot to uncover. 24 hours of hell in one of New York's top hospitals have been laid bare with pictures showing patients lying in hallways, urine soaking the floor, and staff incapable of providing answers. A woman who asked to not be named told a news outlet that she rushed her mother to Mount Sinai Hospital on Madison Avenue on March 8th because she suspected her mom was having a stroke and her mom is 67 years old. So that's why she took her mom to the hospital. Now the CAT scan was ruled out, excuse me, it was ruled out by the CAT scan um, that was carried out within 10 minutes. But then a nightmarish day for the cancer sufferer and her daughter began as they were left waiting in the ER ward in limbo, desperate to find out what was wrong. Every corner was filled with people, she said, describing trash littering the floor, urine pots used by male patients, kicked over, and homeless people seeking treatment, but totally ignored by staff. It comes amid patient backlogs and staffing shortages after the pandemic that have stretched New York hospitals to breaking point and sparked strikes by nurses. Wow, it's, it's really chaotic. Like, this is crazy. You even see an orderly watching soccer while he should be doing other work. Thousands of nurses quit the profession when COVID-19 forced them into working grueling hours while, while being exposed to the deadly disease. In addition to the lack of staff, many elderly and vulnerable people avoided doctors and surgeries during the pandemic, creating a patient backlog as ailments. Many of them deadly have gone undiagnosed and untreated. More than 7,000 nurses went on strike in January, overwork and pay conditions. The New York Nurses Association reached an agreement with Mount Sinai Hospital and Montefiore Medical Center after a four-day walkout. Now, however, the system, the system remains under the mass strain. Video taken by the woman on March 8th from Mount Sinai's chaotic ER ward showed an elderly woman complaining after being wheeled out of the um, the room she was being treated in and into a hallway. So they took her out of a room and put her in a hallway. I want to be in a room, not a hallway. I was just in a room. She yells at hospital staff, you want me to get critical? Because I'll get critical real quick. How about that? Now, off camera, the woman then started hurling, you know, bottles of water in anger. Photos from the ward show nurses chatting and using their iPhones despite the unfolding chaos around them. One elderly was even, excuse me, not elderly, one orderly, okay? One orderly was even seen watching soccer on the computer. Apparently, oblivious to the patient's suffering in the in the ward, you know, you got urine everywhere. You got sick patients on beds in the hallway. It's garbage everywhere. The homeless is coming in, and they getting ignored. It's a lot going on. And you mean to tell me there are orderlies watching so a soccer match on the computer instead of instead of getting up and trying to calm down the situation because it's chaotic. It's chaos in there. Pairs of urine and vomit were left lying for anyone on the overcrowded ward to knock over at any moment. And that is disgusting and that is dangerous within itself. The woman said that nobody ever offered her mother if she needed help using the bathroom and later that night when she got up to go on her own, she stepped in a puddle of urine. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. Nurses are seen standing around chatting and gross in their phones during the chaos. And I'm, go I'm going to be showing you pictures as I do my commentary. The litter, the, you know, the floor is filled with garbage. Okay. 
No one has come to clean it up. It's disgusting. The floor is dirty. Oh, Lord Jesus. This is horrible. Horrible. Urine is seen smeared across the floor as pots were um, set down by patients and kicked over in the hustle and bustle. Oh. When she asked a staff member if it was always like this, she was told that it had been this way for the last two years. On that morning, she had gone to pick up her mother from her home in upstate New York and found her disoriented. She couldn't even get her seatbelt on in the car. This is a high-functioning individual who goes to work, she said. Her mother, who is also a cancer patient at Mount Sinai's oncology department last month had valve had a valve replacement surgery but is otherwise fit and active now the 39 year old daughter called staff at mount sinai who suggested she drive her to the emergency department on manhattan's upper east side they arrived at 9 30 a.m she received her cat scan within 10 minutes which ruled out a stroke the daughter said her mother, who was, you know, was comprehensive, um, who has comprehensive health care, had received first-rate treatment when they thought her life was at risk. But after this, the patient care became disgusting. Nurses and doctors are over, are, uh, on well, nurses and doctors on the overcrowded ward were unable to answer any questions about what was wrong with her mother or provided a timeline for when they would hear back about the results of the blood test. Everyone kicks the can down the road until their shift ends, the married mother of one said, and then the new ones come on the ward, and they say they don't know what's going on. And I've seen that stuff happen before, even before the pandemic. You know, if it's crazy in the hospital, you go to the emergency room, and let me just tell you, you could be there all day. From If you get to the emergency room at 6 o'clock in the evening, or whatever your illness is, or whatever hospital you go to, you're not getting out of there until the next day. It just, especially, um, you know, Interface Hospital was like that. St. Mary's Hospital, um, Killer Hall, what we call Woodhall Hospital was like that. You know, it was just craziness in those hospitals. And back when, and you know, back in the day, Brooklyn Hospital used to be okay. Um, any hospital that was further downtown Brooklyn was pretty much okay. But now, not so much anymore. It's just it's just crazy now. It's just really crazy. So when I can only imagine after the pandemic and during the pandemic, it was even crazier. Okay. And they always said that if you're not really really sick, don't come to the hospital. You know what I'm saying. So, but this is just top tier disgusting at Mount Sinai Hospital with her mom's getting off the bed and stepping her foot right into urine. Like, where's the maintenance guys to clean this mess up? What's going on? I understand they understaffed, but you got to make sure that area is clean. You have to. That's disgusting. Urine and vomit out exposed? Absolutely not. That's horrible. That's, that's disgusting. That is just awful. So, and then when one shift leaves, you know, they pussyfoot around until they leave. And then when the next shift come in, the next shift, the next shift don't know what's going on because no one briefed them about what was going on. If they either read it in the notes or they wait for a doctor or they ask somebody, hey, what's going on? Or they have to find out all over again themselves. So it's really crazy in those in these hospitals. It, it's just really insane. So they were left in a corridor for four hours before being moved into a crowded ward with only curtains for privacy. Um, she also added there was another woman crying her eyes out. She was like, I've been here for 15 hours. Either help me or let me go home. She was genuinely sobbing. It was really sad. The woman was eventually told that her mother will get a room. So she headed back to Westchester to look after her nine-year-old daughter. But when she called her mother this morning, 
She was horrified to hear that she was still lying in the open ward surrounded by filth. When I left, I was told she was now getting a room and guess what? They lied. She's still sitting here and they will do that. They will lie so that you don't have to keep asking them what's going on. It's, it's really sad. The woman was finally discharged at 2 p.m. the next day, more than 27 hours after she arrived at Mount Sinai Hospital. Doctors did not manage to discover the cause of her to be so confused and disoriented. So Mount Sinai declined to comment because they know they were wrong. They know that they could not give you a give the news um, article a reason you know, for all this stuff. This is this is just crazy. Let me tell you something. These hospitals, they don't care. They do not care. And I'm I, I'm gonna say this. I am kind of surprised at Mount Sinai Hospital because when I was like a little, little girl, I had my hernia operation at Mount Sinai Hospital, you know, uptown, like you know, upper Upper, upper, upper west side or upper east side. I'm not sure which one it was. But it was, um, yeah, it was really good at that time. But, you know, time changes. And like, this whole pandemic, when it happened, <sighs> nurses will be on work overtime. Some nurses didn't get a chance to go home. You know what I'm saying? And they got burnt out. And they didn't want to work anymore. They were working all these hours. They were getting under, you know, they wasn't getting the pay that they deserved. Man, I remember um, over there by Brooklyn Hospital, they had the freezers outside, the, the trucks the, with, the, with the freezers. But they was putting bodies in there like crazy. That was just, oh, that was like so sad to see. I was like, oh my goodness. What? Like, this is, it was really, really crazy during, during that time. But come on. You, no one could take the time to stop talking to each other or stop looking at the soccer match and clean up the area, clean up the urine, clean up the vomit, clean up the garbage so that people could be in a clean space at least. Like, come on. That's just horrible and disgusting at the same time. But anyway, I did want to share this with you because when you see the pictures during my commentary, you're going to be like, what the heck is this? It's just really crazy. Okay, so I just want to share that with you guys. And let me know in the comment section, what do you think about all of this? And how do you feel about the conditions of their hospital while patients are in the hallway waiting for a room? You know, have you had any of these, you know, experiences? And I'll talk to you later.